OK, I'm logging in as me now. I didn't get this question when I logged in as root because the machine was pre-installed for me. Now it's saying, hey, Brian, which desktop do you want to use? I don't know. There's probably a few of you Solaris people in the room. And you're probably familiar with this desktop called the Common Desktop Environment, or CDE. Um, you don't even want to look at it. It's very antiquated. It's functional, um, but it does not really pass by any means for a modern desktop. So you'll choose. You can switch back and forth. Um, if you want to check it out, there's no harm in selecting it. But I'm going to select the Java desktop system. And just like with Windows or Linux, I have logged in as a new user. Things that I've done as the root user or any other, root, root, you, any other user are now undone, meaning I have my own unique desktop, and so on and so forth. So I've added the user. I did this password stuff. So we've set up my new user. Now, my new user, B. Leonard, who I'm currently logged in as, doesn't have a whole lot of power. There's not a lot I can do in the system right now. And so in Solaris, we provide, this is one way we differ from Linux, is we provide something known as rights profiles. And there's a whole bunch of them in the system. And you can define your own as well. And so I know that I want to be, for example, the primary administrator of this system. And so there's a rights profile that allows me to do that. If there's this Etsy security execute attributes file, and in there you can see all these rights profiles that are named. Here's primary administrator. He can he, the primary administrator can execute anything as user ID zero. Who's user ID zero? Yeah, root. That's root. So basically, by giving myself this profile, I, I can sort of behave as root. How I do that is with the user mod. So I did user add to create a new user. I'm going to user mod to add the, pri the primary administrator profile. Right, the, the comment here is you need to be root, um, but why? What would root? Is it a privilege problem? That's right, yeah. So the command, this, the, the, this, remember I told you there's two primary directories, user bin and user sbin. Uh, administrative type commands are in the sbin directory. I don't, as a default user, I don't have that in my path. So what I'm going to do, so what I'm doing is just editing um, my bash RC file to, to augment the path so that user sbin is in there. So I could restart the shell, or I could source the bash file. So now, if I try that command, all right, now this is the error that he was alluding to. Great, you have access to the command, but I do not have the privilege. As I would expect, I should not be able to give myself primary administrator privilege. It says, error permission denied. And so what do I need to do? Yeah, su. So I'm going to switch su to the root user. And the password was Solaris, right? And now I can. OK, so I've given myself, let's see. OK, there's a file called user attributes, or user attr, in the Etsy directory. Remember, Etsy wears configuration files and stuff. Here's my new user, B. Leonard. Notice the profile I just added, primary administrator. And it will check to make sure that that's a valid profile. I couldn't add something you know, that wasn't actually defined. OK, great. So I'm the primary administrator. Let's try to run a privilege command, like format. OK, that didn't succeed. It said, I have no permission or no disk. I know I have a disk in my computer, so that's not the problem. I have no permission. What's up with that? I just gave myself the primary administrator profile. Why is it failing to actually act like the primary administrator? So that's my question on this slide. How do I use the profiles? And this next slide is one of the areas where people that are new to Solaris sort of scratch their head at and wonder why we're so different than Linux. And it's the PF exec command. So you'll often hear people say, yeah, in Solaris, instead of using sudo, you use PF exec. And if you, 
you only know what sudo is if you know what Linux is, but it's typically in Linux, you run sudo to run something as the root user. And it, it asks you for the root password. Solaris is different, and it's more powerful. So it's, it's very common for someone to say, yeah, just use sudo. Just use pfexec. It's just like sudo. But it's not, because it's not running it's not running commands as the root user. It's running commands against whatever profiles I have. And so when I prefix a command with pfexec, it's going to first check which profiles are assigned to me. And I just showed you this XC attributes, um, I'm sorry, the uh, user attributes file. And the profile I have is primary administrator. Well, that in itself means nothing. It's just a token. So then it will look in the execute attributes file and see, ah, primary administrator. OK, he can run anything as user ID 0. So then it goes ahead and runs that command. If I had instead assigned myself the printer manager profile, which is really only allowed to run LP commands as the printer user, uh, when I tried to run this for format command, it would still say no privileges to do that. So hopefully you can see how it's much more powerful than traditional sudo is. OK, there we go. So we prefix the command with pfexec, and now it's showing me the one disk on my system, uh, C0, D0, and I will talk about that in a second. All right, so sort of wrapping up this whole talk, I started, I said, I'm going to get rid of the root user. And so let's do that now. I'm going to I'm not technically getting rid of the, well, I am getting the rid of root as a user. What I'm doing is converting root to a role. And so I'm going to say, um, uh, what was the command? Uh, yeah, uh, user mod dash k type equals, I think that is right. Yes. What I've just done is I've taken the root user, let's look at, Here's that user attributes of file, the same one where I am a primary administrator. Root is now type role. He's no longer a normal user. What that means is if I logged out and tried to log in again as root, it would say, you're, I don't know who root is. You're not actually a user of the system. And so let's, um, let's try su again. We know the password. But it says, no, roles can only be assumed by authorized users. Sorry. So I can no longer SU. So how do I actually become an authorized user? I'm primary administrator. What do you mean to tell me I'm not an authorized user? And so I can also add the role to my account, just like I added the profile. I think that is. OK, good. Now let's try that again. There you go. So as I added the role to my account. Then I switch user. Now I've assumed the role. Now the point to take away from all of this is why is this so much more secure than what we had before? You all know what the root password is. It's Solaris. And some of you probably remember what my password is, but that's the key. Is the key to log into the system now to get root access is you not only need the root password, but you also need someone else's password. And now I can trace. So typically, if like we were all share this is some massive system, and I, I created, you know, I handed you all, I said, hey, let's use this system, and we're just gonna all be root, and here's the root password. You know it would get screwed up. Somebody would do something foolish. The problem is we'd have no idea who, right? We're all logged in as root, and there's no way to track it. Well, instead, I can create user accounts for all of you in the room. I give you all your own password, just like I showed you. Now, I also tell you the root password is Solaris. But now when you go in and do something screwy, I know who did it. Because you had to log in first as you, and that's all logged. And so now I can trace who did what. So you can see it's much more secure than a traditional system with just a root user that someone logs in as.